Hey, hey everyone and welcome to episode 48 of Double DM, the first episode of the new year. Okay, okay, I really want to get into this because we have announced Why Your World Matters 3. We have another lineup of amazing guests ready to talk about creative writing, their process and so much more. We got our lovely host Sage back, Ali from Dice Drop, Matt from Roleplay Chat, Re from Romeo Indigo Echo, Tyler from Magic Missile and Matt from Dungeon Glitch. Like, would you look at this panel, please? What an amazing cast we have. This panel will be held on January 15 at 1 p.m. EST on twitch.tv slash steamsage1. Another exciting announcement is that Double DM is nearly one year old. January 7 is the first time Niels and I talked and agreed on this project and the DDM trailer will go up at that point in time. Our first episode, however, came out on February 7, and that is when the DDM Best of the Year will go up. Another thing is we want to wish you all a Happy New Year, and we hope for another year full of adventure, treasure and fun. With that, there is nothing left for me to do but to ask you to give us a nice review on your podcast platform. Spotify now also allows star ratings. And if you want to book affordable ad slots on this show, just message us on Twitter for more information. And with that, welcome to episode 48 about puzzles. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of 2022 of Double DM. How are you doing, Nils? I am a bit tired already, but overall... The year is already shit. <laughs> Basically. just I just forgot to give back a key from work yesterday at the late shift, so uh, which they needed today. So you need to come in for the early shift to give so it back, So I right? had to wake up at 6 a.m. today to deliver the fucking key and then just go back home. Well, this is your own damn fault, right? Yeah, it is. And I hate myself for it, but at least I got coffee from my boss, you know? Well, that's something, yeah. How about your day? How was it? I woke up, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. I mean, people... We are recording this on the last day of 2021, on the uh, 31st of December. And yeah, I was up till like 4 a.m. yesterday, talking to the Unchapped crew about some secret TTRPG business. Now we're just making dick jokes and, I don't know, As references do. about uh, inside jokes, so nothing really. Yeah, I was just talking to the dudes and, and, and the gals and, and who or not and everything in between. All lovely people, obviously. Of which some are probably listening to this right now, so... So they are gonna listen to me rambling how much I love them. No, but I just talked to them. Went bad way too late. And now I'm here. Last day of the year and I don't have anything to do. Yeah, so the day is yours. It's yours for the taking. Yeah. Do whatever yeah. the fuck I you want with it. Yeah, exactly. I won't do anything at all. Yeah. I, I might I might get up the energy to get myself pizza, but that's everything. Like, like I, I will just order pizza. That's ev that's the most prolific thing I'm gonna do today. <laughs> I mean No I have nothing today yeah. and I just don't want to do anything as well. I mean, we're already halfway done with the day. In like twelve hours it's new year for us. Oh yeah. Oh boy. How fast the time flies by, right? Yeah. Sometimes it just flies by. Do you have any plans today? Uh, I'm just meeting up with a co-worker and some uh, some of his friends. So we are, I think we are five people. Mm -hmm. And just sitting around, drinking some booze, eating some, some booze. Some booze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Like, I feel like, especially the last two years with the obvious going on, it just showed me that <laughs> there's nothing bad about just doing nothing on New Year's Eve or not doing big parties or watching fireworks or even making your own fireworks but just take it like a normal day and if you want to do something do something but if you don't want to do something you don't have to exactly like any other day as well yeah exactly if we want to go out and party go out and party on a normal day yeah well don't do it on a Thursday just because I say so um, okay yeah sure, sure. <laughs> and I can't recommend Sundays especially if you have to go to work early on Mondays because 
Yeah, yeah. Just because I don't think we need to tell the people how they need to party. I think the people that party do know. So we had a session this week together. Yes, we had. So please, Niels, would you recap that session for us? I can most certainly try. First of all, we played a session of Vampire the Masquerade. We did, in fact. And I enjoyed it, but I have some criticism for me right off the bat. I have to get into the emotional role play a bit more to really enjoy the system. Mm -hmm. Because that's what Vampire the Masquerade is all about, basically. Inter-character relationships, how they feel and stuff like that. Because as a vampire, you have powers, but you can't really use them at most of the time uh, most of the time well you can but it's a problem right exactly Th- that's the thing about it. It, it it the system is so fundamentally different from D. let's say it's the normal in quotation marks normal play style of us so yeah there it, is some time adjusting to that yeah there is some adjusting to do and i'm not saying you as a group did anything wrong but i think you approached most of the i don't even want to say challenges because then it feels a more a lot more like D again you approached the things i present I think in a manner that I just wasn't prepared for because I thought we didn't you you guys the system doesn't really support that type of engagement with that yeah like we went out looking for clues but physical clues finding tracks and following them to find certain hints or even the bad guys themselves or without even completely trying to figure out beforehand using social encounters basically to find out who who they are, why they are doing this and stuff, and we try to reverse engineer it a bit. The, the thing is, in Vampire, you have these, let's say, fantastic powers. Mm-hmm. Again, quotation marks. Meh. But again, the system makes sure that you don't rely on them. It's not a power fantasy. The game is not a power fantasy. It's not about being the heroes and being the saviors of the day at the end. It's about being a vampire, surviving this dark new world and maybe trying to find some sense with yourself some yeah. reasoning and you, you you guys because with how we play you never you you guys were never supposed to figure out why these people are doing what they're doing right you have never been tasked with that yeah so the question on my end already becomes why don't you guys have a talk about what you're supposed to do right it's not normal for you guys to just backtrack the people that did this and this yeah we aren't uh, stereotypical adventurers no you're not and that's something we need to get used to yeah because we usually in this group or i i assume now most of us play just these types of classic fantasy power fantasy role-playing games where you are an adventurer going out solving mysteries and fighting dragons or some shit yeah you're you're not supposed to be the heroes of the day exactly You, you can be at the end but that's a different point of the game i feel the game isn't supposed to make you the heroes you're supposed to become the heroes if feels like it it's hard to explain generally you guys didn't didn't do bad at all we had fun and that's all that matters but i think you guys would shine more if if you were to expect less of the game handing you the info you need to solve Mm -hmm. the case because no it's not gonna do that it's not like DD where it's like yeah you're supposed to save the day so here's everything you need to do that it's you're a vampire do whatever the fuck you want and try to survive no but i think we'll get there and yeah hopefully the next session or at least in the next couple all it takes is really a push from any side and i don't think i as a gm or storyteller can do give that push yeah because then it feels forced and then you guys won't do it one of you just has to pull the trigger on okay can we please slow this down can we talk about this okay can can we really think on what we're doing can can and then we will see yeah. what comes i mean there are great actual plays of vampire out there that one can watch if one wants to more understand how vampire works because i that's what i do i look at other people playing the game to figure out how for example i should do my prep because frankly i don't feel good prepping vampire the masquerade yet mm-hmm. because it's not the usual type of style of game i prep so i f- sit there and think is this actually what i'm supposed to prep is this what i'm what i should prep is this even good prep and yeah so i also need to figure out a lot but that's the fun right yeah. that's the learning, fun of playing in your system learning shit as we go yeah i mean we do that with the podcast as well we started with not knowing anything and now we're here uh, top five of the hall of fame votes this year yeah do you have anything else Anything, any New Year's resolutions you want to share? Nah, fuck that shit. Okay, perfect. (laughs) 
So, uh, with that, we will see you guys after the ads for our episode about puzzles. Gemmedfirefly.com combines nerdy interests and aesthetic attitude into one awesome store. Find shirts of the highest quality and softest comfort along with home items such as mugs, blankets and flags. Collections like the dungeon glitch Gigi designs or the spicy not safe for work section offer a variety of unique graphics perfect for your message, attitude and lifestyle. Profits from the shop have planted thousands of trees to fight hunger and climate change while also supporting notable charities and game community causes. Check out the link below or visit gemfirefly.com and skim your favorite shirts right now. And with that, welcome back to the episode. Today we're talking about traps. No, we're not. We're talking about puzzles. Yeah, fuck, <laughs> yes. Today we're talking about puzzles. It's puzzle time, everybody. And why did Nils say traps? Well, because traps and puzzles often get put into the same category for role players, right? They often say where well, this is a trap or a puzzle because they are adjacent to each other. But Nils... Please explain to me and to the listeners, again, our first question always, what is a puzzle? And again, before you start, I wanted to emphasize it's important to think about the definition for oneself, right? We're talking about the definition Niels is going to give us now and discuss on that basis what we mean with a puzzle. But if you're at home and you're thinking about puzzles differently than us, please, that's all the power to you, obviously. Think about it yourself. Think about puzzles, how you want to think about puzzles. And you're going to have maybe different answers, maybe different conclusions than we do. But if you're thinking about the definition first, you can find a baseline that works for you. So, Niels, please, what is a puzzle? I would say a puzzle is a problem or a question that you have to answer using your skill or knowledge that you have gained through whatever means or it could be a situation that is hard to, or difficult to exp uh, explain slash understand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's still vague you exactly. would agree right so if we go a little bit deeper into that for example we what well, a riddle is a riddle a puzzle a riddle could be a puzzle okay. but it isn't exclusively why isn't it <sighs> I think every riddle is a puzzle, but not every puzzle is a riddle. Yeah, that's that's true. Puzzles can be a lot more than just a simple riddle. Yeah, uh, puzzles would be probably the overhand term for everything that you need to think about to solve mm -hmm. in a rough way of speaking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then within puzzles, puzzles, you still have different subcategories regarding different methods of solving the puzzle. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But when you're talking about a puzzle, I think a puzzle is what it boils down to is a situation where the characters and players, where the person that is faced with it has to use their especially cognitive abilities to solve, right? Mm -hmm. You In a riddle, you need to understand if you're talking about the question riddles we, for example, know from Lord of the Rings. That's really just thinking about what could this question mean, right? What could this mean? So exactly. the thing is, it's a situation for you to solve that involves you to f to figure out what you actually are supposed to do because often a puzzle clearly says something to you but does not make it clear what you're supposed to do and, and, and i think that's why they get put a lot into the same category as traps the reason traps and puzzles get put into the same category is because they serve the same purpose in role-playing games they are meant to slow players and player characters down they are meant to hold them for example in a dungeon it doesn't matter if you put a trap in a certain room or a puzzle in a certain room when there is when when they have to overcome both to get out of the room again exactly. right in the puzzle episode we talked about the room filling with water that can be considered a trap but you could also consider that a puzzle figuring out how to stop the water right and that's why yeah. these two things are very intertwined and it's hard to really differentiate between the two which is why we're doing this episode as soon as possible after the trap episode so we can continue on what we've already built there so needs yes do you have any questions regarding puzzles? Anything you want to discuss today about puzzles? Uh, in general, I would say let's talk about where you should use puzzles. Mm -hmm. Where can they be used? And why would you use them where you said? Because I think puzzles is a bigger term than traps. And kind of, since we just said, they are kind of 
the same or not. Everywhere you can place a trap is also a place where you could theoretically place a puzzle, right? Your players enter a room and they have to find their way out of there. And they could either do that by overcoming the trap you put in front of them or the puzzle you put in front of them. For example, a riddle, right? You put the statue in there. The statue speaks something to the players and the players need to answer correctly. Every time they answer incorrectly, one of them takes 1d6 psychic damage. It's one of the most basic, basic things I can think of, right? So as with the trap episode, it's a lot about where does what make sense. And a puzzle, in my opinion, is a lot more complicated to place than a simple mechanical trap, for example. Mm -hmm. But with the um, example you just given, yeah. couldn't you say, in a, at least in a TTRPG sense, that traps are a subcategory of puzzles? Then? Yes and no. I think traps, when you're talking about the basic trap, for example, the pitfall, mm -hmm. that is not a puzzle. That is a challenge to overcome. But if we're now talking, for example, because we used that example in the trap episode, a room filling with water, that could be considered both. So traps kind of fluently, the more complex they get or the more open they get, the less clear cut they get, the more they turn into puzzles because we talked about this, right? Traps are challenges for your players to do something, to make them feel cool, to make them feel... Uh, like they've prepared correctly to make them feel triumphant, whatever feeling you want to evoke with that, right? Yeah. And a puzzle does the same thing. If they solve it correctly, they're going to feel good about themselves. If they're not solving it, they're going to feel bad about themselves. Well, not bad, but you get what I mean. But if you have a simple trap that is a pitfall, okay, the players now need to jump over that. Okay, that's basic, but that works. Maybe they find their unique way across that. Maybe the pit is long and they need to throw a rope and climb there, right? Th that's innovation for the players have a genius way to overcome your trap but that's not a puzzle but when you for example fill the room with water and your players now need to find a way out of this room before they drown yeah and like we said in the trap episode they could cast water breathing but that doesn't solve the trap or the puzzle that that's just overcoming the trap the water filling exactly. the room but the puzzle is how to get out of this room so yeah again these two things are very intertwined and i think especially the overcoming of a certain trap is a puzzle, the more complex it gets, yeah. right? right? A puzzle shouldn't be solved by a single skill roll, in my opinion. Exactly. I'm I know with you there. One thing about that is I know before people come for us on Twitter or wherever, I know puzzles are not everyone's cup of tea. I'm not talking about that they are too complicated or too easy for some people. And I'm talking about that they don't fit in some people's opinion. And I can, I, I get that opinion because puzzles often enough challenge the players more than the characters. And that is not the point of TTRPGs. Well, kind of. <laughs> the players yeah. are still the ones having fun. So if a puzzle is fun for your table, use it. Because you're there not to challenge the characters in the game. You're not there to... So your players can take up the mantle of a character and that character gets challenged, but rather that the player gets challenged through playing that character. Exactly. You know, this gets confusing and it gets multi-layered, but TTRPGs are a high social construct. That's something we've said a, long, a lot of times already. If a trap or a puzzle is fun for your table, even though it doesn't challenge the characters or the power to you, it does for my table, for example. But I get the reasoning is solid. It doesn't often challenge the characters but it can if you use it correctly so a puzzle for me is definitely more than just a skill check because then it's not about what a puzzle actually means if you're thinking about when you when, when you get a puzzle or, or riddle or whatever thingy where you need use your instincts and your intellect your wits whatever your cognitive functions to overcome it that's a puzzle right yeah. I, can, I can i can ask you what walks on four legs in the morning in two at noon and three in the evening we all know that it's man baby normal human old person with the cane easy peasy yeah. but if you ask that for the first time in your life you need to think and it doesn't come down if we would now translate it into a ttrpg sense it doesn't come down to a single intelligence role really definitely not at least then i wouldn't consider it a puzzle for ttrpgs it can still be a challenge in ttrpgs right in the game world a traveler could ask the heroes that and if they and if you say well this is easy just roll intelligence like if your character would know the answer to this then i wouldn't consider that puzzle even though for our, for us in the real world that would be a puzzle that question for the characters is made 
may not be. So really a puzzle is everything where your players have to be creative mm -hmm. and use more than just their skills, their ingenuity, their exactly. innovation, their gear, right? They, they need to use stuff. And it's not just their abilities on the sheet. It's more than that. Yeah. And in most cases, puzzles aren't really a physical challenge. Yeah. Rather than a mental challenge. Because, yeah, I mean, you can solve a Rubik's Cube by smashing it to pieces and gluing it back together. But this isn't the right way. This isn't how you are supposed to solve it. You aren't solving it exactly you are yeah. getting the result without the solving process but the thing about that is right a puzzle can use all the physical props it can and you can use every physical skill you have to solve the puzzle exactly thinking about puzzles in zelda dungeons for example or video game dungeons you as the player need to do the thinking but your character in game still has to move boulders and blocks and pull levers and right they use they still use physical props but again like you said the challenge is mental and exactly that's the reason Reason why it gets fuzzy for people when they have a puzzle in front of them because it challenges the care the player mentally because they have to mentally solve this puzzle right and now they have to actually put on an extra layer of i have to play a character that would mentally solve this puzzle mm -hmm. and that's why i think they they don't get a bad rep in my opinion they just some people just don't like them and we, again i get that it, when it, if they're not the, your cup of tea that's okay no problem at that you don't need puzzles to play games you don't need a puzzle in a dungeon to make it a good dungeon We, I like puzzles for my games. My players like solving them if they're good enough for them. Really, that's all it takes. Yeah. And since they're a mental challenge, like you said, they challenge the player mentally because the player needs to figure this out as well for their character to even be able to figure this out. Even though their character might be smarter than them, which is then the problem. How does a character who is smarter than the player figure something out when the player can't? And that's yeah. one of the bits where I think it puzzles just fail. Well, not every puzzle fails at that but that's one of the big pitfalls of puzzles the character player disconnect and yeah. how and, and now the question obviously becomes how do you bridge that i don't need you don't need to answer that question honestly it's a very it's, big question it's a and tough i think one. we're gonna answer it through more discussion we're having mm -hmm. now this could be a good leading question for this whole discussion which we mm -hmm. then maybe at the end of the episode can answer with one or five sentences yeah rather than just now so uh, Overcoming the bridge between the player and player character disconnect is this is the main reason trap uh, traps I said traps again that puzzles, it's the same <laughs> <laughs> that puzzles can be difficult to set in to your world because yeah. it can lead to your game grinding to a halt at some point and that's one of the most important parts I know if you bridge that disconnect your game doesn't grind to a halt and that's as many of you know if you've listened to more than two or three episodes of Double DM is one of our big core tenets of our DM philosophy DM should make sure that their games don't grind to a halt because nobody is having fun if the game grinds to a halt at least exactly. I haven't found someone that has a fun if their character can't do something and they as a player don't know what to do no one does I haven't found people like that. So I think we should move on to one of another question. And if that's okay with you, I'm, I'm gonna try to do an experiment with you. I think that may, may help with understanding that disconnect. Okay. So you're a character or a player in my game. Mm -hmm. Let's say we're, we're in Titan's Call. You guys are in a dungeon and I hand you guys a puzzle. How do you feel? Let's talk, let's talk about Niels. How would Niels feel if he's handed a puzzle by me? I would uh, at first just read everything through and then try to come up with a solving strategy. So mm -hmm. I'm instantly, I'm liking mental challenges and thinking about stuff and trying to solve everything through logical thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I would love puzzles, but depending on how hard they are and depending on what type of puzzle it is. Yeah. Okay. One thing I noticed, you said you would read everything carefully. Yeah. That means you expect a handout because I didn't say, a, I didn't talk about a handout. I handed you a puzzle. That could also be me explaining the puzzle in my opinion. But you, you were talking about a handout. So let's talk about a handout, for example. Why would a handout be preferable for you? Because then I don't have to ask the same question over and over again if I forget the answer to one of the questions. Like, what color is this column? It's green. Okay, then, or I could write, the, write it down myself, but I need it written down so I can sort it 
in my head without always having to ask the same question again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so a handout already bridges that gap already. It yeah. helps you understand because, right, now I'm going to add something extra to that bridge again. Mm -hmm. I hand you guys a puzzle. And as we all know, for example, in D&D, &D, in a game that uses a game master, the game master is conveying the senses of the characters to the players. So the players can make informed decisions for their characters. Mm -hmm. I convey to you guys what you see, feel, hear, right? What you sense. So yeah. I convey the puzzle through your character's eyes to you. That is me translating. Right? I have a puzzle. I need to see what of this puzzle do the characters actually see. Then translate that to the players or convey it to the players rather. The players then need to make decisions based on what they think their character would do with that information. I would then have to interpret what that means for interacting with this puzzle which has its own mechanisms and it's more or less i know a puzzle normally hasn't hasn't consciousness but now it has as an example we have this puzzle and and and, and it inter interacts with the characters as well and the characters do something and it reacts to that right mm -hmm. and i need to interpret how it reacts to that so now you understand why this is why this disconnect becomes a big problem because i need to convey something to my players the correct way so they can interpret their character's action the correct way. So a handout solves that problem because I hand them exactly what, what this puzzle is in a handout. Yeah. For example, a and you can build that handout multi-tiered, right? First of all, exact description of what the players see. So everyone is on the same page of what they see, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's you enter the dark room, you see this pillar in the middle with runes scraped on it. You can t twist and turn a few rings around this uh, pillar and, right? If your players ha all have the same description, there isn't any miscommunication among them about what they see and how exactly. things might work. And then you can add certain things onto that handout. If your players find out if they turn the middle ring, the runes turn blue, whatever that means, in the end, then that should be on the handout as well. Everyone should have, right? The handout works perfectly because I think a puzzle's, um, the first building block of a puzzle is consensus understanding of it. You as the DM yeah. need to make very clear how this puzzle looks and you, you need to be very concise in your explanations and descriptions of this puzzle because if you mess up once, that's gonna, can destroy the whole experience. Trust me, I've been there. Mm. Uh, <laughs> building puzzles so, can be yeah. a bitch. A handout solves that. And it's not like you make a description and you, all your players write down the same from you uh, in their notes. No, 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 no. You write down exactly what you say for the puzzle to work. Because mm. then you have the puzzle in front of you yourself and can hand that out to your players no, at whichever stage of that puzzle they are. Seeing it, trying to figure it out, figuring it out, solving it. I, I don't have a real stage, but think about what you give to your players when and give it to them in a way that prevents confusion. So yeah, yeah. preventing confusion is the first answer to that question already. So now I want to talk about Niels who plays a character. Name me any character you want. Any character you want. Just um, the concept is enough. Yeah, let's go with my character from Titan's Call. Okay, a fighter, human fighter, battle master, a little bit of high charisma, low dex, exactly. strength, bit of con, intelligence, wisdom, yep. kind of basic, right? Yeah. Okay, he walks through this dungeon and boom, puzzle. Niels gets a handout. But how does that all feel for Aiden? Is he good at puzzles? Is is he bad? He's Especially, not the best at puzzles, but yeah? would probably try a hands-on approach first. What does that like mean? trying out different combinations rather mm -hmm. than thinking about the correct one before applying that. Just going, seeing where this goes, trial and error, right? Exactly. Simple but effective, you could say. No exactly. matter what that does to the puzzle, but he tries. Okay, that is a decision Niels made. Niels made the decision Aiden would be the one that just trial and errors this uh, until he finds the right right combination, right? Yeah. That That's Niels. Niels and um, there's that disconnect. Would Niels do it differently? Probably. See. So now Niels needs to, okay, I need to play Aiden. Aiden would try first. Give me the information I need to figure this out. So now we're getting into the disconnect a little bit more. How does that feel? Your character doing something you as a player don't want or uh, wouldn't do, don't want is different, wouldn't do. 
I feel challenged to think outside of my own comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And I think for me personally, I kind of like it in a way where it isn't massively forced on me without consent. But if I mm -hmm. agree to playing in a campaign, I am agreeing to playing a character other than myself. So I am agreeing to thinking outside of my own mind. Yeah. So I am feeling kind of good if it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. the approach mm -hmm. doesn't fuck up the whole group dynamic and the whole thing and everybody dies and it kind of works it doesn't have to work perfectly but if i kind of find one clue or aiden finds one clue which i then can as niels convey to my party who might uh, think differently about this and help them solve the uh, the puzzle i'm feeling good okay 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 i'm asking niels now again not in this experiment but generally how much is too much meta gaming on this and meta gaming not as a term of of using information you don't have but but generally also conveying information you wouldn't convey this way for puzzles. I, I, I think metagaming is a big discussion and I don't want to, to dive too deep into it yet, mm -hmm. really. Um, but is there a place for metagaming, even though that term is, it has so much negative connotation in discussion, in open discussion, is it, re is it really that bad? No, in my opinion, not. Definitely not, especially and in puzzles it isn't, because it mm -hmm. helps the whole group and the table as a whole to move forward in a normal and fun pace. If you as your character wouldn't figure this puzzle out, but you as a player would, why wouldn't you help your player, uh, other players solve the puzzle if you not helping them means or leads to the, um, the session grinding to a halt? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some sort of um, need for the players to do that to help the DM make sure that the session doesn't grind to a halt. One of the things is how do we solve one of this, uh, the big problem that kind of has been touched with this, what you just said on session zero. Really talk about puzzles with your group. How do you feel about it? How much of that is you solve it as a table? How much is you solve it as only the characters, right? Have, have a discussion about that before you use that because it's easy to just say... To get to, to get an answer from a player who says, I don't want us to talk out of character about this puzzle at all. And then the rest saying, well, then just don't use, let's don't use puzzles. And then you're done with that. Then you've cleared that and, and avoided that point of, let's say, controversy, even though it isn't a mm -hmm. controversy. But you've avoided that point where people might feel um, like they're not enjoying the game, but others feel like they've enjoying they've been enjoying the game a lot. You don't want, you want everyone to enjoy the game. Right? Somewhere yeah. you have to make compromises for a group to work. but And with that, you should also discuss how long, roughly, you want to have per puzzle if you are using puzzles. Yeah. Because it can be a really, really fun session just to sit down and solve one of those, I think, Einstein riddles, they're mm. called. Mm. Those can be a lot of fun, but not for every group. I did that once with my group, right? We had fun, yeah. but at the end, we all were like, well, ugh. Exactly. Ugh. Was a fun session, but not again in the next two years or something, right? It's Definitely. It's very fun to do that, but only if you have the right group for that. Because exactly. what you want to avoid is that everyone is around the table, ha hats in their hands and like, ugh, why do we do this? I don't have any idea. You don't want that. Exactly. And so um, what I wanted to focus on especially is out of character discussion, right? Um, again, players have different knowledge than the character. The puzzle might seem obvious to them. And I think out of character discussions about a puzzle are fine. At least at my table, they are. I don't have a big problem with my players out of character discussing what to do because that is fun for them. Um, they are not allowed to do that, for example, in, um, in a combat, but in a the puzzle there are. They are allowed to discuss that, for example, at the end then we still find a way to incorporate the role play into it. What we, for example, do is we discuss out of character, then when one of, one of us gets an idea, they propose that idea to the table, and then we all think about how our character would work in that idea, mm -hmm. which is very fun for us. I don't know if it's fun for everyone, but you propose an idea and the rest says, oh well, perfect, I could pull this lever and we see what happens, and then, and then they turn to the M, okay, my character's had enough of this, 
I go pull the lever now. I want to now. After the discussion in character, which then kind of works like the discussion in person might not be mm. perfect, uh, perfectly equal. But let's say they basically we do an out of character discussion, which then reaches the same conclusion as an in character discussion, which we never play out. That's how we yeah. do it. It, it kind of works. Again, might not be for everyone. A lot of the time, uh, that's, this will be kind of the, the, the second topic of this. It might not be for everyone because puzzles are not for everyone, in my opinion. Okay. Moving on, right? Okay, so out of character discussions, kind of okay, kind of okay. Good, good. Now I want to ask um, Nils. Yes. How does it feel to solve a puzzle? It feels good, usually. Depending on the puzzle? Usually. Usually, but in general, stress relieving sometimes. Rewarding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And in general, just, mm-hmm. ha, I am smart. I can do stuff. Bam. Just in general, a, a good feeling. It's a good feeling. It's a good yeah. feeling all around. Because puzzles have a clear reward. The fun thing is puzzles don't have a reward even. They just have an ending point. But that ending point is the reward. I think that's part of the definition of puzzles even. Mm-hmm. Or should be. The ending the finishing of that puzzle is its own reward. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That th- that feels good. And now let's talk about the different side. What? How do you feel if you don't solve a puzzle? If you and this means either the game running to a halt and you being able to do nothing else, or you just failing. If it's just failing, I'm okay with that. If it leads to the session running to a halt or the story cannot be continued in any way, shape, or form, this is frustrating. Yeah. Because if you are still able, even if you fail every puzzle but are still able to, in what way, shape, or form ever, continue the main storyline you were set out to do. Maybe not in the way you have planned, but in a different mm-hmm. way, it still can feel good because you have you had an obstacle which you didn't overcome, mm. but could still finish the the storyline and then talk about what happened why we had to do stuff differently and you had to think on your toes Mm -hmm. but if it completely blocks off everything else it's just frustrating and annoying okay so that is one other building block of puzzles and we've talked about it a lot not letting games grind to a halt so now let's ask the question let, let me ask you the question how does a dm ensure that a puzzle doesn't grind to a halt but because right we've now talked about the dm gives their players a handout for example or, or states the puzzle at least in a clear way so he's given his players all the information they need normally Mm -hmm. normally they've gotten all the information maybe they've also tried a bit they haven't succeeded yet and everyone is like well i have tried everything i can everyone at the table is i've tried everything i can how do you as the dm help with that because you have the answers one thing you usually do i know there are people out there that say don't have the answers prepared just take whatever your characters find is funny can work is not for me same here but i would spread Sprinkle in hints. Mm -hmm. If I see they are just hammering on the same idea and this is as far from the truth as it could be, I just sprinkle in a little hint or a little reminder. Mm -hmm. Hey, remember you have that information and then they come back to that and maybe find a different solution. Mm -hmm. So in general, hints, reminders, nudges in the right direction. I agree. Hints are the best way to, to make sure the game doesn't grind to a halt and you can sprinkle them in at any point given so you can also stop the game from ever grinding to a halt or starting it back up if you see it has grinded to a halt. Let everyone make an intelligence roll or whatever roll is appropriate or let the player that has done the most work on this puzzle get the hit. Reward the players. For example, if you think for example, if you have a player that has a high intelligence and, and you feel like they should be the one to actually do this, let everyone roll. They are they have the highest intelligence. They have the highest chance of being the person with that. W- that gets the hint. Let them get the hint. Maybe that will make them solve the puzzle and make them feel good. So, hints. How do you do them is a big question i know depending on the type of puzzle you have Mm -hmm. it could be for example if it's a mechanical puzzle it could be that you describe deeper scratch marks on this wheel on this uh, position of the wheel than on others Mm -hmm. this might give a hint that maybe this is one of the right um uh, positions in the constellation yeah or hey you thought about in the einstein riddles you just give more information that is set in stone which then uh, doesn't completely derail everything but just gives them a little more room but in general descriptions of the worn downness of the object they are supposed to solve could be one thing or then nudging in the right direction with 
with reminding them of information they still have. Yeah, exactly. I think that that's kind of the two types of hints. Either you add something to the description of the puzzle, and the description can also be how does this puzzle work, right? For example, what you also now realize is you can't turn this wheel further than this position. This is the end. And that could be a hint, for example. Mm -hmm. Or um, reminding of something. You know this wheel can't be turned further than that. What she was proposing shouldn't be possible. Remember that. And yep. that gets your players right on track again. Both are valid, especially when you're talking about the adding to the description, introducing new information to the mix that could help. Uh, that's one thing, right? How do players find? They could have find hints through trying, right? They turn this wheel as far as it goes and they realize, okay, it stops here. I don't know. This could be important to your puzzle but right your players do something or find something out through any means and that's a hint and then then it's reminding but you could also add information to the description or to the mechanism of that trap uh, that they haven't found out yet that you introduce so they can find that crucial part what you do with that is you kind of need to figure it out before right yeah figure out how your puzzle for me figure out how your puzzle works even if you don't have an ending prepared you need to figure out how it works in what ways can your players engage or your player characters engage with it figure that out because that gives you then what you can give to your players find limitations find um, intended uses this is a wheel that's supposed to be turned only clockwise it can't be turned counterclockwise it can only be turned clockwise that could be an intended use right um, that that yeah. could be a limitation and find these things these keys to the puzzles mechanisms even if they're not mechanisms mechanical mechanisms in the game the mechanisms of your puzzle because those could trigger hints or could trigger new information for your players to solve the puzzle right either they find that you introduce it and if you introduce it you need to have it so now i want to talk about especially the dm side right do you hand out many puzzles Niels? not many very sparsely and if i do i make sure that it is solvable in a moderate amount of time if i use puzzles i do a lot of preparation i write the puzzle and then give it to a let's call it a focus group mm -hmm. to multiple different people and then just let them try to solve either uh, one person alone two persons together three and so on and so forth it's a lot of preparation that needs to be done at least for my puzzles but then i get a estimate about uh, of the time that is needed to solve those puzzles and then I can either readjust them or scratch them completely or use them in the game. Yeah, I think especially for DMs, there is a few things you need to consider when making a puzzle. Presenting a puzzle we've talked about. Make everything clear. As clear as you can, because if you're not clear enough about it, your player's not going to understand it, and that's a problem. Exactly. They can ask questions, but you need to be the one that gives them the answers, and you need to have those answers. You can't be, well, yeah, it kind of works, I guess. So what you need to consider as a DM is obviously, can my players actually solve this? And that doesn't even only mean, is the puzzle puzzle solvable but can my players solve this puzzle if i propose to my players a mathematical problem that has not been solved by top mathematicians for 10 years in this world they are not gonna be the ones to solve it that's Probably not gonna not. happen not at a tdrpg table at least yeah. so i need to think about can my players solve it and is that puzzle actually solvable right niels does that through a focus group that is one approach to this if other people can solve this so can they mm -hmm. maybe they take a little bit longer or a little bit shorter than the focus group maybe they find the right hint at the right moment and, and instantly solve it but generally right the focus group is a good thing but not everyone has a focus group so how do you do that if you don't have other people to ask one simple thing for, that i found is make a puzzle any puzzle you want read it and make it simpler because you as the dm that's one something you always need to realize with puzzles with everything really you have the answers your players don't for you it seems very easy what should be the correct answer but only because you know the correct answer so it's very easy write the puzzle you want and then find ways to make it easier mm -hmm. because first of all that takes care of communication or miscommunication rather it's easier to convey to your players which makes it easier for them to solve it but also the first thing is it makes it just easy for you to convey it to the players and that's important so they can solve it second of all it's easy enough for them to actually solve within reasonable time right as we said it's okay to have a four hour session just solving a puzzle but let's just say i know my table wouldn't enjoy that very much often maybe as a one-time announced thing next session is only you guys solving this puzzle 
nothing else. Is that okay? And everyone says yes, then it's good. But normally I think a puzzle should take between one and at maximum two hours even. Yeah. Or, or at maximum two hours and can be go down to at least to like 20 minutes or something. That That's kind of the range you're working with here. And if that puzzle is, um, in your opinion, easy enough, good. Then it should be medium for your players. And yes, this is not good. This is not a good tip in my opinion because I can't give you exact pointers of what to do and how to simplify something. But make it, but if you do puzzles more often, and I'm not saying that put them everywhere, but if you have, right, you only get these, the, the feeling for how hard a puzzle is if you've done a lot of puzzles yourself, if you've created a lot of puzzles. You can always take puzzles from the internet. There are thousands out there and it's it's amazing to take one of them, but think about if your group can solve them. Wow. Um, I think that alone covers a good, a good basis to that question we asked in the beginning. Yeah, it, it covers most of the stuff. Because the question we asked, how can we bridge the gap between player characters and players, isn't just answered through a discussion about puzzles. It's a way yeah. deeper question. It's, but it's a, yeah. if you um, ask this question... With a focus on puzzles, I think we have answered it fair enough. Okay, then I want... Can you condense that for me real quick? Because I have one other point I want to go into. As a fade out before we end the episode, but mm -hmm. condense that really big question for me again. So... The question, how can you gap the, um, how can you bridge the gap between players and player characters for puzzles regarding puzzles? You can, or you have to make sure that your descriptions are as good as they can be or as precise as they can be, which mm -hmm. can be achieved through handouts, for example. So everyone is on the same page. You can ensure that this uh, game is not grinding to a halt through hints and nudges in the right direction, which also helps with bridging this gap because then if a session grinds to a halt, no one is playing their characters anymore and it isn't fun for anyone. So in general, precise descriptions, hints, handouts, and making sure everybody at the table is having fun before any of this is going to take place in a session zero or in a discussion before the session. Hey, today will be there will be a um, puzzle today. Are you okay with that? Even if it takes a lot of time, get that out of the way and you're good. And I think to add to that, Bridge gets gap by making a puzzle easy. Not too easy, but easy, especially if you have the answer. So it will be medium to your players by finding ways how everyone feels about out of character play as well, because a puzzle invites out of character play. Not everyone enjoys that. Once again, if you do talk with your players, if they all enjoy this too, great. Then find a way how to make out of character play matter to the game without it feeling weird and misplaced, kind of, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if your players come up with a plan, ask them, okay, who is doing what? And then they can think what their character would do in that situation they've come up with or who would be the one to do it and because we're playing this game together a puzzle isn't a solo win even f if a person solves the puzzle and propo and just says okay i do it that is still could still be a group win because the people that came before and made trial and error mistakes or something still added to that right to that decision they've made it's always a group effort even if one person solely solves the puzzle by doing the right combination of numbers the rest help them through their attempts, through their ideas. So it should always be considered a group effort, never a solo play. Definitely. Very important. If that goes for players and DMs. Make sure that it's never considered this person did this alone, this character or player didn't contribute. Make sure that everyone contributes and make sure that everyone has fun together. And then you go. Because when you think, if asking the question, is everyone having fun? And the answer is no, then you did. Then, then there's something wrong and that needs to be addressed. One thing I wanted to say the whole episode but didn't get to, um, this is kind of now just an end, uh, what types of puzzles there are. And mm -hmm. we've talked about a lot of traps for placement and making sense and obviously all of the, that still goes here. So listen to that episode if you haven't. Everything needs to make kind of sense. But I think for traps uh, or for puzzles, they, are, they have different categories than traps. 
So we've talked about the riddle. We talked about mechanical puzzles. Obviously, when there's mechanical, there's also magical. Mm -hmm. So what other traps are there really? I think especially the mechanical and magical side kind of take care of everything. That's one way to distribute puzzles. But another one, for example, is another type of puzzle I love is roleplay puzzles because they mm. take care of that out of character discussion that some people don't like. So yes, people out yeah. there that don't like puzzles, you can still use them. Use roleplay puzzles. For example, I had a puzzle where all of my players picked up a certain colored ball and were cursed in their communication. One of them was only allowed to speak at the f as the third person in a row. So if one person was talking, that's number one. As soon as someone else was talking, that's number two. Then they were allowed to talk. If they were interrupted or someone else spoke in their place, they had to wait for that person for five and then could have spoken at the sixth place again, right? Another person yeah. had to take on a certain role. You are now a detective. You need to ask a lot of questions. You need to find this mystery that happened here. One of the other people in this room is a murderer. You need to find out who. How do you do that? Um, another person was only allowed to speak in opposites. No, today is not Wednesday. No, I'm not recording double DM. That's easy to figure yeah. out, but it's fun. Uh, another person was uh, was supposed to be an actor and, and an entitled prick at that. I am the one holding the stage. I am the one to talk, not you. And that created a lot of fun because the others yeah. had to guess which curse they had then say that curse out loud or how they were cursed to break that curse for them. That is a roleplay puzzle that has nothing to do really with out of character discussion because they couldn't out of character discuss. Every time they were talking, it was in character. Obviously, the figuring out was still in the heads of the of the players, right? But that at some point, yeah. the player is in the mix. You can't completely distinguish them. The bridge can never be gapped completely. It all it's always there. And it's a good thing that it's there. That's something I want to say. It's a good thing it's yeah. there. But this roleplay puzzle took care of a lot of players figuring out how it actually works because they all knew how it works. You're all cursed. Until the others speak your curse, you're not allowed to talk about your curse. You need to talk in this curse way. Boom. Everyone knew what they had to do. They That's figured out the puzzle. One. They figured out the puzzle instantly. They just had to figure out what the uh, how the others were cursed. And they could only do that through character roleplay. Awesome. See? So, yeah. Uh, even if you don't like... Even if you say puzzles in, in the traditional sense aren't for you, you can still use roleplay puzzles. And as we said, right? Riddles. Questions that need to be answered in an especially theatrical or poetically or philosophical way are classic. Where you have to move a chessboard with certain figures on it that you have to move in certain directions based on the text you get, right? Getting a poem and then having to do actions based on that poem, figuring out the actions based on that poem is a fun intermission. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can consider puzzles. Is there anything you want to add to, to, to this weird list at the end for people to get inspired? It's just a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Puzzles can be so distinctly different while... Yeah being in the same category. Mm -hmm. It's puzzles are a weird big overhead term of intellectual skill challenges. Yeah. Let's say it like that. They they are hard to determine which type of puzzle you have here. Mm -hmm. But in general, so social puzzles are a lot of fun. Like something of a game of clue could be mm -hmm. you a could huge even puzzle say or the whole pillar of exploration in D&D mm -hmm. is a big puzzle. Figuring yeah. out what is where, where to go, and what to find there is all about a mystery and puzzling and, and then figuring out and venturing out, going into that place and hands-on approaching everything. What is here? What is that? Kind of how you work most with puzzles, right? If you're handing someone a Rubik's Cube, they're gonna turn the Rubik's Cube around and figure out how it works. Even though the, the mechanism is so simple, right? You just turn a certain row and then that's it. There's nothing more to that. But then you can hand them a, a, a mixed one, um, an unsolved one, and say, solve it. You know how this thing works, solve it. And that's all you need. And then they are gonna try. And, and hands on and try, because there is really no problem in failing for them, right? Failing is a big thing of puzzles that we didn't get into today even. Think about yeah. what happens if your players fail. You could have a trap activate if they fail. Mm -hmm. You can have danger introduced if they fail. Think about how you do this, right? We're not gonna touch a lot on, on, on the dangers, but it's one of the aspects that we've didn't that, that we should at least mention. Think about what happens if your players have either a wrong approach, have a wrong try, or fail completely. If they can even fail completely. Have they infinite tries? Do they have e 
just a number of certain tries, all of these things introduce your players to this puzzle, show limitations that your players are gonna need to work, right? Mm -hmm. and, and be clear about those limitations because if you tell your player, you don't tell your players you only have three chances to this puzzle and they try three times, then it's done. And that's not fun because they didn't yeah. think about that they didn't have much approach to this. So yeah, that is basically it from me um yeah i don't have anything uh, think about what a puzzle means for you think about how that works with a player character bridge how that works with how that gap is bridged and how and how to minimize that gap for you because most of the time if that gap is smaller it's more fun yeah be clear in your communication use handouts or hints for your players to more easily grasp what you're trying to say help them as a dm help them um however you see fit to make sure that the game doesn't grind to hold make sure everyone's having fun obviously think about what happens if your players fail at an attempt or at the whole puzzle think about how you can reward them with it obviously as as the counter to that and basically everything can be a puzzle so go out and have fun <laughs> yeah exactly as always have fun use our talks as inspiration for your own shit and just do whatever feels best for you and your table and have a lot of fun out there okay i have one last question for you Niels, and i want to oh boy. do this just yeah. at the end of this discussion how does it feel to be a hall of fame fifth place podcaster it feels good it, it, it just feels Doesn't it? good like solving a puzzle it just yeah. feels so yeah. if you want to hear more of a fifth place hall of fame voted podcast follow us on twitter and instagram at double dm pod you can check out our website at www.dm.com Com, which is still in construction. I am working on it a lot. Just bear with me. I have to work on it a lot. You can rate us on Spotify with five stars. You can give us a review on Apple Podcasts with five stars. Or you can rate us and follow us on other podcasting platforms. Whichever one you're using maybe has a rating feature. Use it for us, please. It means it's the best way for us to get the show out there to other people. And you can follow us probably on there as well. So do that too. Uh, with that, I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Niels, it was a pleasure having this last recording of the year, really. Yeah, yeah. If you think about it, it's, yeah. Oh boy. It's, it's, I actually probably the last of the actual year for us. Yeah. So, my, my, everyone, thank you for listening. We will hear you on the next one. Bye bye. Have a good one. Bye bye.